Ooh, what is up you guys, and of course as always, welcome back to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle, now in a PUD of course, we just really this calendar. And today we're going against Hannah. Hannah is a long time friend actually here from Sweden, and she is one of the few competitive battlers that I would say are better than me, or at least to some extent she knows how I play, and definitely knows the mind games around that. So it's definitely a mind over body, I can't overwhelm her with my offensive proudness because she usually can tackle that fairly alright. And that's rarely a good thing. And <laughs> her team is a really good synergized team with Alolan Persian, Lantern, very good defensive synergized there with Sol Rock, definitely a rare occurrence. And then we have Trevenant, which I rarely see to go Hitmonchan and Mowal. Hitmonchan and Mowal, very tough for me to deal with, primarily Hitmonchan actually. Um, since I, in my yesterday's video, I said that I have some issue with fighting types, Hitmonchan represents the worst of that, which is it does sting quite a lot, even against my speedier threats that could outspeed it. My team is as follows Silvalli Water, Scuff Kumala, Life Orb Manitric, uh, Stealth Rock Agron, Absol with Life Orb Super Broken in this year right now, Lurantis, Defog Varian, no speed whatsoever, and um, from the team matchup here, it definitely, I feel like. She wanna lead up with Sol Rock, it's either that or Persian. So Silvalli is my number one option here, mainly because it does hit super effectively against the Sol Rock, but also at the same time, really the benefit the most is that if it leads up with Persian, or if she leads up with Persian, I can go for potting shot and actually get the slower switch here. So with all this said, let's of course go into the match. So we get a really, really strong start here. As so we see the Persian, so I predict her to of course go for the potting shot. Now, of course, with that in mind. Probably should switch into Laurentis, though I think she has an option to pull, actually force them out. And Laurentis can't hit super effectively towards Moal, and that's not a good thing, so they hit the right. So she brings Luminia, and that is the Lantern, and uh, we, we, we are right here. Not only do we, of course, nerf the Lantern a little bit, we also get a very, very fair and easy switch into my Vermalis, my Laurentis, and I can go for the easy Leaf Storm. As she actually goes for Volt Switch, actually risking me to, because I could outspeed. But then again, 67 I do believe is the speed of Lantern, so it's naturally not speedy, but it's speedier. So good chance of going for it. As I go for Leaf Storm, we do actually some quite a right damage there against the, um, the Triven. And then as of right now, I'm not aware of which set it is. It's definitely not a Salt Vest, so predicting the Citrus very, very impossibly. As she shows me substitutes, this is definitely something with berries in mind. As I go for the hidden power ice. Now, from the thought of situation here, I definitely should have optimized for I think the stronger play here, which which was keep going for leaf storms and just get the damage going. Now she goes for Phantom Force, and I'm gonna scout actually the damage over killing her. Since I am defensive, I shouldn't have been too worried about the Phantom Force. You guys see it does 40% roughly, and you know, I'll recover myself with synthesis. No, I, I'm fine here. I'm I'm in a good spot, but I definitely should have gone for Hidden Power, getting the damage done, because that would have tri killed the Trevenant. At plus two, that's how they get the Trevenant. So they switch into the Nom Nom, and I went for Leaves from here, and I do miss it, unfortunately. And what I mean by that is that, you know, I really wanted that damage. I gotta go to Gaseum, predicting the play rough with Iron Head, and she goes for a Sword Stance, and that's not good. That's not good at all. And here is definitely something I should have done, you know, he, he goes for Iron Head and it does a plethora of damage, that's life for boosted, and the Heavy Slam is pretty shy of a KO, and uh, I'm, you know, wiggling back and forth, you know, she's going for another Iron Head, um, can I soak a hit, and that's where I realized, okay, I can probably switch into my Silvalli and just try to soak that Iron Head, um, I cannot... <laughs> That stinks. Uh, the critical hit did matter to some extent there. Definitely get very amount of damage on me. But I'll decide to go for a parting shot over the Surf. Definitely Surf here would have secured my KO. And I actually go for parting shots thinking she would go for Sucker Punch. Which she did not. Unfortunately, I'm bringing Baltus here. Thinking it could soak a hit and I can retaliate because it's unscarfed. I cannot. Ouch. That's a Kumala dead. And I am forced to go to Aizen which is my Absol, and just go for a Sucker Punch, just finish the job, basically. But that was that was a stressful series of turns, and that really, really, really took a toll on me. Luckily, though, the game is far from over, but we have a Whittle Down team very early, as we see, of course, Swam come in, which I only can think is a bit of a play on Sok, I don't know. Uh, as I'm just gonna sack Garuga here, which definitely would have been useful throughout this Wi-Fi battle. A bit unfortunate that it was so heavily whittled down with that Iron Head. 
But you know, we give some, we get some, we give some, I don't know, lose some, we give, win some, lose some. Anyway, I'm bringing in Barras, my manager trick, predicting her to switch into um, Lantern. I'm actually going to do a double switch into my Laurentis here as I get that prediction right, uh, which is awesome. So here is the Luminia. And I'm actually going for Leaf Storm yet again, since Volt Switch clearly is not hurting me in the first place. And we are we are fair here. As long as my Laurentis is in a good amount of health, I should be able to deal with the Hitmonchan fairly all right. As of course, you guys can see we are doing some hefty chunk of damage here. Trevenant is down for the count. We have yet to see the berry pop, though. So it's not citrus either. As here comes what I would say the scariest situation of a lifetime. She is stuff berry. Stuff berry basically means that when you're over or under 25%, that anything will get raised by two, uh, completely random, which is scary because. Her offensive moves here is basically Phantom Force and possibly, I would believe, Woodhammer. But as of this point, you know, if she keeps harvesting, she is going to set up and become very, very, very ferocious. Uh, she goes to the Phantom Force, clearly. Uh, I really try to do my very best here, but she gets to harvest again, and now she raises speed by two. And that's not good either. As you know, Phantom Force does so much damage, I couldn't risk it here. I really just want to scout the damage. As of this point, I was, you know, wiggling back and forth. What do I do to stop this? Uh, at this point, I really just want to go for another synthesis, hoping she goes for the wood hammer over, um, what do you call it? Uh, go for wood hammer over the Phantom Force, just trying to secure the KO and get the free switch in. But she goes yet again for the Phantom Force. I am now forced to sack something because we are dead by default here. We cannot take another one of these, and especially she's got another raise in her attack, and it doesn't help to get that one more time, and now she gets raised a special attack, which is okay. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna sack the aggron here, and I'm gonna try to bring ice in my Absol, just try to, you know, survive whatever comes my way now. <laughs> you know, clearly aggron dies here. That's, uh, we, we couldn't avoid that situation at all. Uh, my only my remaining Pokemon now are Laurentis, Manetric, and the Laurentis. And I'm gonna go for safe knockoff here. She was definitely not outspeeding me. I knew that, at least not a plus two. Um she could have, but she didn't. Um and we get of course that right. Now here comes the Hitmonchan. I can't do anything here at all. I need to sack something. I really need my Absol to be active to be able to deal with the remaining Pokemon as it is already. Uh, she goes for Drain Punch, clearly does as much as it should, and quite frankly, at this point, um, she's going with that Mag Punch, and I can't do anything about that. I don't get any damage here. So, my switching here is Vermalis. I just really need it to be at this If Hitmonchan is roughly around 50%, Sucker Punch will KO. So, I really just want one hit here. But we go, she goes to Soul Stig, and I go for, of course, the Leaf Storm. It's going to show me that it's sashed. And here is where I definitely make a mistake, and major, major props to Hannah here. I decide to go for an attack, fully aware of that it could probably go for explosion. And that pretty much seals my faith. Had I gone, and I really can't stress this enough, had I gone for a synthesis here, I would have won this game because she would not have been able to KO me and a plus two Leaf Storm would have been able to KO the Hitmonchan or at least to roughly 90%. We failed to do so and I definitely believe that Hannah, due to this series of play, are by default, really, they were the winner here. She really pulled all the stops and got a very, very strong win against me. She wins this game, I do believe, trio with the Persian Lantern and, of course, Chan still active. And I definitely was enjoying this game. It was a bit salty, I definitely would say that after the game, because I was so frustrated how much work Hitman Chan did against me. But then again, that's my fault by design. So yeah, a quick rundown here, and first and foremost, Hannah, I'm sorry if I gave a, if it felt like I was salty or irritated after the game. I, I was, I definitely was, but I'm sorry if that was coming through. I really hope it didn't, but if so, I'm sorry. Uh, I was not supposed to. I was a bit frustrated over the crit versus Sil Valley, uh, because basically that meant that I couldn't take a sucker punch anymore. And I felt that was probably the biggest frustration, though missing the Leaf Storm was also kind of rough versus Mowal. Mowal got accessibility of doing a lot of work versus me, which it wasn't supposed to do. Had I landed the Leaf Storm, uh, Agron would have been able to care with uh, when it came to switching in. So I felt that that was tough. That was very tough. But at the same time, I had the option to actually win the game even to the very end, and I optimized for the worst play, going for an attack move versus Stalrock over Synthesis when she went for an explosion. T to be quite honest, I think 
that play on its own really just showcased that Hannah was one step ahead in Wi-Fi Ballet and knew exactly what she was doing while I was offensively trying to just shake her. Um, so with that said, with that mentality, she is the world winner because she was a stronger overall player throughout this Wi-Fi Ballet and a very, very fair winner. And then, quite frankly, I had a lot of fun here. It was a very, very strange game, and it did optimize for very, very interesting matchups overall. So, Hannah, for what it's worth, thank you, of course, for Wi-Fi Bell, and I hope you guys enjoyed this game. Uh, the stuff Barry said that she was using is something a good friend of us has been recommending us, which is Ellis. Also, major shout-out to him on Twitter. Very cool player, and the stuff Barry variant. While it didn't do all the work here, it sure as hell did some work. And me not being able to eradicate that threat made this matchup a lot tougher. So, as always, guys, thank you for watching. And join us next time. To the wars, we're going to go for some Are You, I hope. Yeah. Leaving PU a little bit. Don't worry. We'll be back. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Join us in the Discord if you want to bail me and, you know, etc. Take care, everyone. Bye.